is now the fourth week of us doing our show from home and honestly I felt pretty proud of what we've been able to accomplish in the woods. That is until I saw this guy. Oh my god, he killed off the entire Groot dynasty to make his workout equipment. You son of a bitch! Now, obviously, we're all still worried about the coronavirus, but last week saw an early sign that social distancing may be working. The number of ICU patients with COVID-19 in New York dropped for the first time since the crisis began. It's a signal America may finally be flattening the curve. Great news for everyone, except the president, who complained, saying, quote, I liked her before. They look like titties. But even as we try to find hopeful news, we have to acknowledge that the disparity between which Americans are living and which Americans are dying is too strong to ignore. African Americans are dying at a much higher rate from the coronavirus than any other group. According to the Washington Post, counties that are majority black have three times the rate of infections and almost six times the rate of deaths as counties with mostly white residents. For people who have experienced racism their entire lives, these disparities seem obvious, which is why it can be frustrating when even officials like America's favorite team beat cover gov, Andrew Cuomo, have more questions than answers. Why are more African Americans and Latinos affected? They're still are apparently disparities. Why? It always seems that the poorest people pay the highest price. Why is that? It seems racism is as big a mystery to Cuomo as Cuomo's nipples are to us. Are they pierced? Are they unpierced? Will that happen to me when I become governor of New York? The answer to all Cuomo's questions is tragically familiar, centuries of racism. There's a ton of data on how we've placed minorities, particularly black and Hispanic communities, in the path of this disease. For starters, infectious diseases like coronavirus spread faster in densely populated areas. It's why bars and theaters are suddenly empty. I mean, except the theater that's hosting my one woman show. That's been empty from the start. New York City, the current U.S. epicenter of the virus, has an average of 28,000 residents per square mile. And seeing as people of color are more likely to live in these densely populated areas, it can make it hard to even take the most basic of precautions. Imagine what it's like to practice social distancing in some of the crowded urban areas of these cities. Even though they're told to do social distancing, sometimes it's impossible because of the crowded conditions they live in. Good for him. He put on his scientist costume even though he's working from home. Even within those crowded cities, there's still a disparity in who gets infected. Last week, the New York Times found that the lowest percentages of positive tests were in wealthy, largely white zip codes. That is a shocking disregard for minorities, even for the town that gave us friends, who, by the way, created coronavirus when they decided to throw a rave in a germ-infested New York fountain. It's no wonder Dr. Fauci begins every press conference with the phrase, I hate the TV show Friends. And while many of us can work from home, including a woman who one of our head writers once described as technically a celebrity, a lot of people don't have that luxury. When you drive around New Orleans, what really stands out is a lot of the people who, have, who are essential workers who have to go to work. You go to a grocery mm. store, you see uh, the, the, the conductors of the, the, the iconic street trolleys here, the bus line. You know, a, the majority of those that I've seen, African Americans here in this city still having to go out, whereas other people, yeah. uh, perhaps, you know, white collar jobs, if you will, are able and have the privilege to be able to work from home. You They're cannot drive the bus from home. You, you cannot do these jobs from home. And it's not just working that puts people at risk, it's also going to work. In New York, overall subway ridership is down 87%, which has prompted the MTA to cut service. That means that, as this woman experienced, subways serving working class neighborhoods are even more overcrowded. That is terrible, not only because people are risking exposure, but because this is the only time in history man spreading is okay. Worse, black Americans are more likely to have pre-existing conditions due to factors beyond their control. A lot of those pre-existing yep. conditions that make COVID-19 deadly, like heart disease, diabetes, asthma, they're already overrepresented in black and Latino communities. It's an epidemic jumping on top of a bunch of other epidemics. Our bodies have borne the burden of chronic disinvestment, active neglect in our communities. All of those insults on our bodies have given us more of these so-called pre-existing conditions. In fact, numerous studies show that black patients have to navigate racial bias in the medical system. They're routinely undertreated for their pain and have to wait longer for medical care than white patients. No one should have to wait to see a doctor when they're facing an emergency. 
Unless you're there because you accidentally put a can of LaCroix up your butt, you need to take that time to learn what you did. Meanwhile, access to testing during this pandemic has been a complete shit show. A recent report found that states with more black residents and higher poverty had lower rates of testing, and doctors are less likely to refer African Americans for testing, even if they show symptoms of COVID-19. Meanwhile, white patients like the guy from Operation get rushed to surgery for dubious conditions like funny bone and water in the knee. This pandemic has forced us to once again consider the massive inequalities our society is built on. Fortunately, some leaders are taking it seriously. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot formed a racial equity rapid response team and has required health care providers to report on testing demographics. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer launched a task force to address COVID-19 related racial disparities, and so has Boston Mayor Marty Walsh. Boston, as in Boston, the last city I think of when it comes to not being racist and the first city I think of when it comes to peeing in public. I like both. State and local government stepping up is a good start, but that's all it is, a start. Whenever disasters hit America, people of color are usually hurt most. The inequalities we're facing now are built on generations of systematic disinvestment. We have to address those racial disparities to save lives, not just for this pandemic, but for everything. If Boston can attempt it, so can we.